Hello, um, my name is William O'Shea and um, I'm Mary Mackle student and I'm uh, talking to Michael Hartnett about the ranks. So uh, talk, you, you have two pictures here for us. Just before, uh, just before we go into the, the details of the whole ranks situation um, and the redundancies and so forth and the closing down of it, I'd like to give William here two photographs, well two copies of two columns, there's one. There's 12 photographs and what's very interesting in it, I'm giving them three actually. What's very interesting is in the photographs, is one of them, at the time Rhine's more or less opened, this would have been 1930, yeah. uh, the Provender Now I presume the flower side would have opened around that time as well. But what's in this photograph is we had. Um, 29 of my employee or uh, my workers um, would have been redundant in 1979 to 81, 79 to 1981, and uh, I know it doesn't seem a long time ago, but um, what's very interesting with this photograph is all the people's pictures or their their um, names are on it, and from the day to start it. Okay. And from the money they had received in redundancy, oh, yes. which would have been four hundred thousand at the time, Jeez. and um, <laughs> it, uh, it doesn't seem a lot now. But I mean, at that time, thirty nine, seventy nine, thirty two, thirty three year ago, it was big money. Um, the other thing about this is some of the people in the photographs. That passed away now and died, and the memories are with us all the time. Um, so I'd just like to, to give all you now this photograph as well with all the dates and so forth in it. Oh, brilliant. And um, they're going back from 1930 when people started there, 1945. People would have started there, like myself. I worked in Rice in 19. 59-60 I started there and I was there for 22 years after that. I had, um, I had split time, I was redundant in 69 yeah. and I went back to live, worked there again in 1972. So I was redundant again there in 1979, so all the nines stand out. How did you get the job the first time, didn't you, Mr. Hackett? Well, William, that time I worked in spades next door to uh, ranks. It was a timber yard. I worked in the office there. Another great industry, you know, on the dock road. And um, then I worked in the mill side of it. And my father had worked in the flour mills at that particular time. And in 1957, he had died from TB. It was rampant that time, TB. And Rank's job at the time, I suppose, didn't help because it was a very dusty environment, oh, you know. Yeah. As we all said below, clean money but dirty work. <laughs> it was a very good job. Yeah. And um, it's a major loss to the city now, but my dad had worked at that time, and what was very important with Rank's, like William, if your dad had worked there at the time, you had a better chance of getting a job there than somebody else, you know. So family is very important. It was family orientated, yeah. But then again, we had people working in ranks, and um, we'll say if you knew a friend of yours, he wouldn't have to be family as such. But if you recommended him, he could get into ranks as well, you know, during for the wheat season even. The wheat season was probably two, three months time. And that was a very busy period, didn't it? Major busy period, because... Um, We'd have a hundred trucks pulled up outside ranks at a time. They all have, they'd be there at six o'clock in the morning. They'd all, all have to be offloaded into the silos, yeah, you know. Yeah. And um, a lot of the buyers at the time would be implied taking samples of wheat or grain or corn or barley, you know, yes. whatever. And they'd have to take that to the lab then. The laboratory technicians would uh, test that. Right for dampness or quality, yeah. it could be millable, it could be for animal feed oh, yes. and um, the poor quality the poor quality would go to the animal feed oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and 
<laughs> then the good quality would go to the milling. Oh yes. So that would be all separated. And where did you get the wheat from? Did you know? All the farms all over the country, oh, yeah. up as far as... Would you bring in some from abroad or...? Well no, the, 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 there'd be a percentage then brought in from, oh, yes. um, from overseas, oh, yeah. you know, um, American wheat. And uh, that'll be mostly for the the, the, the flower side of it, oh, you know, yes. the billable. Oh, yes. And um, but then again, if we had at the time, if we had sufficient um, wheat at the time for the millable, you know, yeah. you, would, you wouldn't have to bring so much export down. Oh, yeah. So you'd have to, you know, it's very good, really. You know, I mean, but then again, with our damp climate, yeah, it was a major drawback. Because the, the dryers now will be going um, seven days a week. Yeah. If you were on a shift now, you'd be on a 12 hour shift. You'd be working 12 hours a day. Oh, well, you had a good bit of overtime, but the taxman paid a lot of that money as well. Now, I hadn't worked in that side of it myself, as I say, I worked in the animal feed plant, you know, the Blue Cross. What did that involve? What was your day to day test in that? But um, getting back to the provender then, we had a blue cross, it was, you might often see it around in bags. I'll try and get you a few books on it. Jackie now might have some books on it. Our brand was um, Blue Cross. Um, blue Cross on it, Animal Feed Ranks. And um, that would consist of, um, not a dusty job really, but you know, good money and so forth. Uh, when I started in that job in 19, we'll say, 59, 60, we'd have to go down every morning to be jobbed in that job. So when you went down, it could be 6 o'clock in the morning, it could be 8 o'clock. They would have been the shifts. Yeah. We start at 6, start at 8. Also 8 o'clock. But you were jobbed for the day, Ooh. not weekly Ooh. or monthly. Uh, when I started in the job, I received 15 and 9 pence a day. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> find the Guinness that time would have been 1 and 3, 1 and 4. So you will buy, as you know yourself, there was 2 bob in the pound, 2 shillings. Jeez. So you had, you had 10, yeah, you had 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 2 euros in the pound. Oh, sorry, 10, 2 bobs. So you'd have got about maybe fifteen pints at a time for your pound, you know what I mean? Yeah. A pack of cigarettes and all that, so, so yeah. <laughs> it went a, it went a long way that time, you know, fifteen yeah. and nine pence a day you got, you know, that time. It was very it was a lot, it was it was was it in compared like the old same well, rest No, but you got by, you know, I mean you're talking yeah. about it's only forty year ago now, so you got by on it. You know, you had to in Limerick now to get a job in ranks. Like you didn't know, it meant to like compare with other people working there, it meant a lot, I'd say, did it? Oh, that, yeah. Mm. yeah. Last time you, you, you looked after your job, you know. And yeah. um, they were they highly viewed in Limerick, didn't they? They were, they were. Ranks were very highly viewed. Was Limerick at, uh, at that time, didn't like, was Limerick tough? Was it hard to get a job? Was it uh, poorer? It was tough enough to get jobs, you know, but what you done, William, was you, when you got a job in ranks, you held on to it. Oh, yes. You know, a good few lads now would have went to England. Oh, yes. And they would have went off in the weekly boats, instead of the weekly boats, over to Liverpool and, yeah. you know. But, like, I mean, we, at the time, I was going to go to England as well at the time, but, um, yes. I said to myself, you know, I'll hang around another while and we'll see what happens. Oh, and um, as you know, then 19, that was 1968, 69, um, sorry, 1959, 1960. Yeah. Uh, at that time, you paid it 15 pence a day, but you got by on that, you know. Yeah. It was pretty good. And um, the only thing about it was, if you went down to be jobbed in the morning, you might not be jobbed. Oh, yes. So you had to go down every morning to get your 15 and 9 pounds a day. It, it, so it's, it, well, it wasn't secure like though it was Not really, no. no. I should have most of that to your mother, you know. Uh, yeah, oh yes, I should. Hmm. And uh, what, what did you, what did your day today, like they say, what, what did you do every day when she started at 8 or 6 o'clock in the morning? Well, there was three shifts that time, you were on 6 to 2 yeah. 
uh, there was a two to ten shift and then there was a ten to six. Or well, you might be asked then to work a twelve hour shift, that would be six in the morning to six at night, or six in the night to six in the morning. You'll be on a week of night work, a week of days, you know. Oh, yes. No, that was hard work because twelve hour yeah. in that environment it was tough going because it was all packing. Oh yes. You see? Now in the provender you start at six o'clock in the morning, you get a break around ten for your cup of tea or whatever. Then you be working until two, you might be asked to work on until six. Now twelve hour shifts is tough. But um that time would be packing mostly. It would would have been rations to call it all the time. Okay. Fat and pig meal, sound bar of ration. Oh, yes. Half early wiener pencils, which is in the photograph there now. There'd be four stones there now. Four oh, stones, yes. four stones, half a sack. We pack four hundred of those. They'd be all made up now in another side of the mill, you know. It was um, very tough work to which would be, this part now would be the panel room, we'll call it. All the, see all the computers yeah. are behind. All that feed would be made up on one side of the plant and all the ingredients and uh, antibiotics would be put into all the food. Oh yes. It would be made out of barley, wheat, corn. There'd be a mixture of everything yes. in it. And depending on what uh, animal, what, what a kind of cow yeah. you put together. Yeah, fairly weaner. We used to do a lot of Pegasus now for race, oh, race horses. Oh, yes. mm, quite a lot of like that. And there'd be cow fairly weaner pencils now. Oh. Around Christmas time then, would be, it'd work quite a lot of overtime because there'd be manufacturing turkey fattening pellets maybe 24 oh, hours yes. a day for the fattened the turkeys for Christmas. Yes. Mm. And um, I pretty like we have in the, some of the bags now that you would keep, you know, for your research. But that have been the cafe early we have been the we um, that have been the packer there and one of the packers. Oh yes. That'll be high speed packer now. There'd be you can just picture now packing that. There'd be fifty kilos. Oh, It'd be eight stone sacks, you know, as today. You'd have to lift them all over, would you? Well, what happens there is, they'd be packed here. I was packing them, okay. Michael yeah. King down, I'd be stitching the bags. Oh, yes. Just on the left hand there, then there'd be a conveyor band. Yeah. The bag would swing around, go up a conveyor band. Yeah. Go out another conveyor band, out into the warehouse, down a spiral. Oh, yes. Did you ever see the spirals, did you? Yeah. Any of the down the spiral and they'd be going then down to the ground floor. They'd be palletised down there on the pallets. Oh yes. Sir. There'd be two men below palletising. There'd be two men packing it, there'd be two men there'd be six people in a gang we'll call it, you know. And the two men would be off there for a half an hour with to clean up the place and they'd utilise get the bags for the packer and you know you'd be packing about over 200 of those an hour. 200 mm. Now you'd have to palletise those, there'd be a ton put in every pallet, 20 bags of the pallet. So they'd be taken away then on a forklift. You, you were a forklift driver, you were a packer, yeah. you were jack of all trades, you know. And then you'd, you'd, you'd stack those three high and put on the warehouse. So, yeah. so you're kind of, you kept busy doing different jobs every time? Well, it was, well, uh, if you were on the rations, you see, they call that the rations now, yeah. you'd be kept going on that. You'd be on that for the week, we'll say. And would, um, do your lunch breaks in, how, how long of lunch break would you get, or what? The lunch break that time, you worked your lunch break, you had six, six in a gang that time. Oh, six. And, we'll say, for instance, there'd be two packing and two palletising. Oh, and that's the way you got your breaks then. Oh, yes. There'd be two p people off then. In the hour, you'd be 20 minutes off. Oh, every hour. Because there'd be only two packing, we'll say. Oh, yeah. Two palletising. Yeah. See? Yeah. And there'd be two people off then. But the, those two people, you'd need that break because that was very hard work. Your hands would be for the. Yeah, but it's all lifting, you see, yeah. and bagging. Before we, we got to palletising now, yeah. it was all bagging. They called it bagging. You take it off a, a skid. The bag now would come down like that, okay? And it went to a table. 
You take the bag in your shoulder like that, and you'd have a bay, we'll say over there, we call them a bay, right? And you'd have to put those bags maybe eight, seven, nine high, you know, up into the, the bays. Now you'd have to be walking from the table over to that bay. What? It could be 30 or 40 feet or more, and then you'd run back again and get another bag on your shoulder and back again. Now then again, after that then it became handy, it was all palletized, you know. Oh, yeah. And then we had little fork trucks, electric trucks, yep. battery operators, to take away the pallet and, you know, place them in. But um, the bag, you know, was tough, you know. And what kind of people did you work with there? Did you work with, with, with uh, that or did? Well, uh, generally, um, there'd be, you know, the people from all of Limerick, really, yeah. all the different housing estates. Um, the thing about that time was the um you'd be well, so for instance when I started in ranks I was about nineteen, okay. 19. You know, you're nineteen years of age. And when when you went in there then you had a lot of guys moving on with forty and fifty. But they were very good now to help we'll do the lads that, that that come in, you know, all these people there now. They were very friendly and all very friendly people. They're very helpful people, you know. And the good thing about that, William, was, was uh, for instance, when you went down to that job at the time, after a few weeks, you come up to the same rate of pay as those people, maybe after a week or two. Well, you wouldn't do it now in a job because you'd have to work in, we'll say, you know, 13, maybe 14 years before you got to the top rate of a job, you know. But at that time, the owner was very strong and they were always an assistant that any worker would come in, would get would get um, the same rate yeah. of pay as they were doing the same work generally, you know. And did the union and the employers get on well? Was it good? Very good. Very, Very good. good. Yeah. There was never a strike in ranks. I don't think there was anyway. There was threatening a strike at one time all right, but we'll have to investigate now into that one. I don't think there was, you know. Industrial relations was always pretty good, yeah. And were the conditions were the conditions like really safe inside that place? You know, was conditions were safe. Yeah, but it, well, it had to be safe. You know, you didn't like you go in there now. You wouldn't wear a tie, oh. because of the tie caught in the machinery or whatever. You didn't wear a ring because a lot of the, the machinery that time. I bet you for I think there's some of the photographs are in Jackie Hayes's report. You know, yeah. we had a lunch here before in October. You didn't know you didn't come to that. Yeah. But at that time, the um, there's a lot of belts, you know, yeah. drives yeah. we call them onto onto shafts and yeah. little roundabouts, and they'll be they'll be driven by leather. They'll be all leather, you know. And yeah. you'll you'll have to if if they come off, if there was a choke, we call it a choke now. Yeah. If there was a feed going from one area to another, the elevator might mm -hmm. choke, we'll call it. That would have to be cleared, and then what you done was when the drive was working, yeah. you had to put it on with your hand like that. You whip it on. There was a technique in it, you know. Yeah, yeah. Or on the heavier ones, you would have a handle, a special handle, and you'd um, you'd put that on with two or three people. Yeah. You'd whip it on. You know. But it's all technique, like you know. Then in the, um, that was the provender now, we'll say, you'd have the special chick rooms, they'd be in one sun bags, oh, right. small bags. Eight of those would go into one sack, which would be eight. They were handing off with people, small farmers. Oh, okay. There was eight uh, little bags of chick rooms, or turkey fat and pellets, oh, yeah. went into an eight sun bag, which would be um, a jute bag. Oh, yes. And then at the time, you'd hand stitch it, Pack a needle. Oh yes. And you do it yourself, would you? Or the mess? You do the you do the hand stitch yourself. How would the mess you do it? Or no, no. Yes. When I went in there, you, it, it was on. You had a pack a needle. Do you ever see a pack a needle? Oh, yes. Like a needle, now like that, okay? And your ties, twine. Oh yes. Your twine's here, t t uh, tied around your your waist. You pick, you pick um, a tie off. No, it was all gone. Like you know, you wouldn't. And you'd have sore hands for doing this now as well. So you pick, put it through the pack of needle, 
you'd stitch and you'd put a little little bow here on the side of it, okay, yeah. on the right hand side. Then you'd stitch through the bag again to the left and you put another bow like here. Okay, so there's the bag now. You stitch it here, right? You put it like that. Card. Then you stitch back one or two here. You put the other side in it. But the bag would be like that, okay? It's kind of still on the bags today, isn't it? You see it on the, yeah. the, the coal bags and the That's rest. right, yeah. yeah. But they were kind of, um, they were jewel bags at the time. But um, then you had a label, and um, like Fenton and Pigmeal now. Oh, yeah. There were separate labels at the time. Yeah. There was besides you there when you were packing away the stuff. This now was early, it was in the, in the 50s and the 60s. Yeah. And um, you made paste then out of flour. Oh, with the water and you just got your label like that yeah. you put it into a book of a bucket of paste and you just dip it in like that put it in the bag okay. then came afterwards we'll say later on we say the 60s maybe the 70s 80s you got the sewing machines oh, so it was that handy yeah but then we transferred to paper, oh, paper bag. strong paper bags which you see there in the photograph There. Strong paper bags. Yes, yes. And um, as I say again, now there's one down there, and uh, there'll be the eight stones. What have we here now? So I can, uh, we have cattle, cattle, fat, cattle nuts. Yes. Cattle, cattle nuts. Oh yeah. You see, they'll be all different types. Eh? The sun burn of ration, as I said. Did that make it a lot easier for you to? Well, this did. Oh yeah, yeah. This. So you had your packer here, got down to a conveyor band, then it trucked along to the stitcher there. Oh yeah. See? He'd stitch the bag, the bag would fly up the, the band and back down into the warehouse, yeah. That was a lot that was a lot um a lot cleaner as well because you had a paper bag because well say so for instance when this packer this packer would take an eight stone we'll say. Yeah. There's a big bin overhead at. Oh yeah. That field would be manufactured on the next room to that. Oh, yes. Press, they call it. Oh, yes. Press like nuts now, calf nuts or anything like that. Yeah. So press to a yeah. little machine. And do you ever see the little nuts, like a nut? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that'll come through that. So I must get your copies of them. And uh, what happens there then is that the very minute you hit that with the bag. When you hit the, the little, yeah, you know. the very minute that 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 band there will go down onto the bag, you see it? Yeah. Horse stone would fall into that. Oh, so no. If you you had to change your weights, then we'll say for the for the eight stones, and they are there. The very minute that band come down, automatically it will go into the bag. It's very computerized, so modern, was it? This was all computerized yeah. then, yeah, afterwards, yeah. Was it, it, was it ahead, of, ahead of its time, so? Or, like, uh, right? or was every place like that? And, you know, Maybe it was at the time, yeah. it was, you know, compared, you know, to, I suppose a lot of that would have been introduced in the RHM mills in, in England, you know? Oh, yeah. And um, we had, um, we had, um, you had Dublin mills here, Dublin, yeah. you had Cork and Limerick. Did you do some some research in this already? Like I just got found out about lim uh, limit ranks now. I knew there was a ranks in Cork as well. Ranks in Cork, and uh, they done they done rations as well, which was um, they done flour. Yes. Then there have been a Dublin mills. They done all that type of stuff. But then again, you see, maybe there was a lot more farmers that time. Yeah. It's kind of you know, the farming community now has turned to you know grind stock and yeah. There was a lot more. Um, there was a lot more cattle that time, I think, and a lot more manufacturing of pigs. And yeah. pigs was big that time, you know. Yeah. In fact, in pig you now we turned that out quite a lot. The pig farm was declined, really. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. it has declined, yeah. but now roaches are making it now at the moment. Do you know that, don't you? Yeah, I heard it. Well, I know if uh, any any other orchard, if you want to go down, to go down there. You could oh, yeah. go down and do some research. Yeah. Because you're doing that now. And um, I'll put you in touch with 
Actually, you could all just call down to Roaches. And ask for your door to your eyes. I'll be in touch with you. Mm -hmm. Get into that. And would you have to wear a uniform? Did you have wear a uniform? Well, oh, you wore. You, yeah, you How wore. Yeah, you couldn't wear a tie and stuff. Well, you wore an overalls. You were supplied with these, those overalls. Now, you can see just picture there how dusty that job was. See the, some of the clothes there now? Oh, yes, yes. See the dust? There was always a dust, dusty environment there. Would you have to wear... Um, um, if you wished, you could, but um, I never wore one. What? Maybe... Some of the particular jobs you'd have to wear one. Um, if you were, I would say, limestone. Or, you see, there's a lot of raw ingredients as well oh, now yeah. coming into ranks yeah. to make all that oh, yes. food, you see. Yeah. You'd have limestone coming in, you'd have pollard, you know. Oh, yes. You'd have fish meal. Oh, yes. That had all going to separate bins, you see. And um, you'd have malcolm, as they call it. Oh, yes. You'd have. Uh, that, that was all imported. Mm. You'd have seaweed meal. That was from Irish all right. Yeah. All the seaweed. Well, where would that go? Then? Would that feed? Would that feed all the feeds, or would it be just cattle or sheep? Or Dif different, yeah. different, different ingredients would go into different foods. There'd be a chart made out. I would say, for instance, you'd have one, two, three, four. You might have twenty bins. Now these would be big hopper bins. They'll be full up of maize, barley, wheat. Um, you'll have pollard, uh, malcomings. You'll have different ingredients down yeah. the whole way, you see. And what you've done was you, there was a drive yes. and there was a ratchet at the back. Okay, yeah. this now would, would be the old fashioned way. <laughs> before before we, we, we went into the panel room yeah. there, now, would say, for instance. And all that would be percentage of each one yeah. would be put out into um, a conveyor and the conveyor then would go back into a bin a holding bin with all the different ingredients be all mixed up and then you, you can have the the bun of ration or fat and pig meal or you know in the different bins made out of the ingredients from the um, from the all the other bins you know yeah. do you follow me there yeah, you know it would be now, if you go down to, uh, when you go down to Roaches, that you know, you'll see a better pattern of it. I will actually go down there because you'll get, get a good understanding of you'll it. You'll get a better understanding by seeing it. Even the photographs there and all are kind of a help, you know. Yeah. Then again, at a time, what does I want to say? Then we went automatic with that what? into the panel room there. We went computerized then. The room is here. Here, there'll be one man inside there doing all that. Okay, yeah. where you'll be using a couple of floors, operating machinery one time. This computerized. You put in a card and you make out it was all computerized. Yes. You know, it was a, you know it was you know you had to know what you were doing and so forth. You're just putting in a card and. You had to know the different, you know, computerized digits and so forth like that. And that would be blown up in the suction fan from, we'll say, the ground floor of a warehouse. That would be blown up into suction up in the bins mm -hmm. on, on, um, before it was packed out into mm -hmm. a different area. Different. And so, for instance, now the, um, all the stuff here now, we'll say we have the cattle nuts. Yeah. That'll be coming from one particular bin, okay? That'll be going through a press first and then it will be coming up into the hopper here, we'll say calf nuts. Special chick crumbs the same way, turkey fat and pellets. Yeah. They'll be all going through a press. It was a dye we call it, a brown dye. Yeah. And you had to change the dye then for the different we'll say nuts, pellets crumbs, you know, or else it is ordinary meal, you know, that will become from the bins right away, but on the press, the press side of it now, we call it a press, that will be pressed out into the dye, yeah. 
that it comes from this side okay but automatically it would be made then afterwards from the um, from the panel room itself as you said that it got easier yeah. you know so that got easier that side of the town yeah and do like after day's work now how, uh, how do you go home from work you know, how would you come and go from work now oh mostly bicycles that time bicycles so <coughs> everyone cycling mm. mostly bicycles we always had a bike you had a no bike that time you thought it was like a no car oh yes mm. But um, eventually then, lads got, I, always, I bought motorbikes then, I always had motorbikes. And a few of the lads then would have purchased cars, you know. And eventually as time went on, you got. But a Honda 50 is very popular, was it? <laughs> I had a Honda 50, I had about four or five, and well, I know I had, I had about three Honda 50s. And then I got a Honda, a Honda 70. They were very popular at the time. Obviously. But on that side of it now, right side of it, um, the dock road was like Piccadilly Circus in London see. at that time. Because you had spades where I worked previously. Yeah. You had natural rusks as you hit the dock road, okay? That would be the first on the, when you would hit the dock road down, down Mount Alphonse Street. You had natural rusks. They'd make all special um, crumbs and stuff for foods, you know. Yes. Still there, natural rusks, yes. yeah. You should go down there now as well. They make a special crumb for food stuff. Yeah, right, right. Go down there. Uh, and when the lads would leave you, just explain to them what yeah. you're doing a special project for Ranks. The next one was Ranks. Yeah. The next one was GWI. They manufactured windows oh, yes, and doors for the, the industry. Yeah, um, but we really are now, are they? Was it? You know, well, down from that, now down from, do you know, do you know the Long Avenue, was that? Yes, oh yes. We we'll call it the Long yeah. Avenue. That's yeah. the avenue I used to go up every day oh, yes. from work, yeah, the Long Avenue. Or else I'd go up Alephonsus Street. And where did you live inside, Mr. Hartnett? Um, I lived in Janesboro, which should have been probably a mile and a half away, yeah. you know, Roxborough Road side. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. Would there be a lot of people come from that here and walk in ranks in the... There'd have been, how do I say now, there wouldn't have been a whole lot, there'd have been five or six, I'd say, maybe right. seven, eight, you know, up to ten, maybe, ten. would have been working from that. Then you'd have a good few lads from Derry Oh, yeah. You'd have a few lads from St Mary's Park. Oh, yeah. Um, you heard of all these areas now, did you? Yeah, if you want me to show you around any evening, I'll take you around, yeah. you know. Um, the other area would be, um, Balananti. Uh, where part of my was said towards Home and Park is now. Oh yes, yes, yes. That area, Killeley, oh, another yes, place. Yes. Generally from along there, Tuman Gate. Oh, yes. we got a few people. Then again, you see, you had the flower side and you had the provender side. Oh yes. They were separate. Uh, were most people the provender side would be would it be just different areas? Would it be uh, same areas? Really. Yeah, yeah. Same areas. You know, we had all our. We say you had a provender mill. You had. You had the flower side. Yeah. Um, then you had the silo side. Yes. The silos where the wheat are coming off the boats and and all the wheat to be dried, you know, big silos. There's one silo still left yes. down there. Would have been the number one. So I mean you had three is it three or four you had? Three I think. Three massive silos. And what would the people do you like all people in different areas now they say people that worked in the Gary or the lighter and, uh, and the people that worked in the silos would they all have got, would they would they would you would they all have got, know each other very well or would oh, they yeah. oh yeah oh yeah we, we always had um, we had two soccer teams down there now we've been to farm teams you oh, know yes, yes. and some of these players would have played with Limerick you know always oh, right, right. mm. and how's that and how's that a lot of four for you and how did that work in the in the farm team was it just the, the two teams down there and they played against each other was it you had, um, we say you had a Limerick clothing factory. Oh yes, yes. With clover mates. Oh yes. You would have a Mara's baking oh, yes. factory. Oh yes. You would have, um, mm. you would have the cabinet factory. Oh yes. You would have the teachers, yeah. teachers oh. in the firm team. Oh yes. Um, you know, you had spades, I played in the spades in the firm team. Yeah. So I would work there, uh, you would have Mike Mahon's timber yard. Oh yes. There'd be a league, you oh, know, yeah. a league of a premier team, premier league, and then there'd be a B team. Oh, but it's interferum. 
And where would you play in the uh, where did you play the matches? Uh? We play in the the general uh, general soccer pitches that oh, were available at the time, mostly Caledonian Park, oh, which I'll show you. Know, I'll show you around the city someday. And where did you play, Mister? Um, I played outside right. Oh, I should have went overseas to Man United <laughs> or somewhere, you know. <laughs> Nobody spotted me at the time, so there was no scouts there. Yeah, correct. But anyway, we played for the real enjoyment of yeah, it, yeah. And, you know. Just and, um, you know, you'd win the, the odd league or so yeah. forth, and then you'd travel on to the, um, it's quite a kind of a, a, a social side. Yeah. Yeah. And was there other social sites like, like, was there like a, Dealer dances and other uh, societies and activities. Uh. Rice will have um, an annual um, dinner dance, and at the time they had it in Shannon Arms. The Shannon Arms now would be a pub at the moment, it's up there by the Perry. And then we'd have it in the Glentworth. Oh, yes. We had it in the yard, yeah. We had an annual Christmas party, oh, yes. and um, that was always very enjoyable. Then you had um, you had a lovely sports there once a year during the summer time, running sports. Then we held on to Villiers out there by the Inns Road, and um, Rings had an interfirm rugby team. Oh yes, yes. Something based on the soccer as well. Oh yeah, yeah. But then you had the inter department matches as well. We say you had a provender in the warehouse or the silos or the office, you know. But overall I could have been six hundred. Six hundred working in um ranks at one stage, you know. Overall no. Because you have the office staff, the provender, you'd have warehousing, you would have um you would have the did I mention the office I did? Uh, you'd have the transport. Oh yes. We had all our own trucks. Yeah. All our own trucks. Delivering flour and everything. Chick crumbs, fat and pigment. The order would come in, you see. Oh yes. And um, what would happen is <coughs> the office would make out the order. Well, say for instance you were ordering so much stuff, now you're a farm, right? And you're, you're a shop, you'll be ordering so much flour, we'll say. Five ton of flour, which would be a hundred bags, you know. And you might be ordering, let's say, a fat and a pig meal, a ton. You might be ordering chick yeah. That list would go on to the two, the two people up the warehouse. Mm -hmm. And they'd get this. Now, you'd have to make it out then where the lads would be dropping off first or last off the trucks. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I get here. You had to have a rotor of the whole lot because if you put on stuff first yeah. that you couldn't get off and it was going to a shop down the yeah. way first, oh, yeah. you would get back. So what should you you follow me now? Yeah. When you were putting on the last the first order, you had to put it on last, the back of the truck. Oh yes. You know? Yeah, I guess yeah. Where well, you wouldn't be trying to pull out this bag and that bag. So that was a bit tricky because if the stuff came down to you wrong and, and the spiral oh, yeah, yeah. would come from all the different floors, you see. You had eight floors and ranks, the warehouse we call it, and all the stock would have been delivered or uh, stocked in those, you see, including the basement, you know. Oh, yes. the, the bags then come down the spiral yeah. and the truck driver below them with his assistant, the truck driver and his mate, would load that onto the truck. Oh yes, I see. But or they might load it on the night before even to be ready to pull out in the morning. But if they didn't try to be gone around they delivered it that then all day. To different shops and bakeries and oh, yeah. you know. It's very hard basis. But a lot of that now getting into the baker was very hard work because you had the baker's flour was there, that was mostly that oh, yeah. all the bakers. And you had to bag that. Um they introduced that then into a ten stone sack. That was ten stone. It was tough going on. And you might have to bag that on your back from the truck, we'll say 30 or 40 feet or maybe 60 feet or 70 or 80, and you'd be going in through ovens and everything into a bakery. Jesus, yeah. And the place would be roasting. Jesus, yeah. And you'd be sweating quite a bit, especially in a warm day. Tough work. It was hard work. Don't you know? know? And could you tell, did you notice, um, said you were like, ring ranks, did you notice the decline that didn't? Uh, 
used to happen like over time did you know it's like do you need to get did you get redundant did, like, did you know it's coming along yeah, well I mean the word went out that um, six years before it closed there was a redundancy in 69 yeah. which I was part of oh, right yeah. now and I said I got back, back my job there again there was a few vacancies at the time I got back there in 72 I think yeah. and I was redundant again in 79 <laughs> so um, I had worked around different places then at the yeah. time, you know. I worked in a green area, a green hills hotel at the time, it's oh Walter, yeah. and I worked with tilers and, you know, and yeah. little nixers here and there, you know. Oh and but um, the decline came then, what did I say? Yeah, it was prior to 60, and I was so 66, I suppose. Somebody said that ranks was was, was uh, closing, oh, yes. and of course nobody would believe them. But yeah. you know, a lot of clients know where all it is. And they say, how how? What do you mean ranks is closed? How can ranks close? Yeah. You know, because yeah. it's so big and whatever. And they what would you do with it? You know, they done with it, all right. Look at it now. But it did close eventually, like. Yeah. But that was one time. Sixty nine. They got a good package at the time. Now seventy nine. 79 a lot of people could have went as well under under redundancy but they decided to stay on okay but in 1981 the whole shebang closed now the guys went in in 1981 didn't get the same package as we'll say 69 and we'll say 79 oh yes you know yeah. but it was we'll say 79 i was redundant that had been three years before it closed completely oh yeah so now at the time, the lines of 79, what did I get at the time? I think I got a few hundred and sixty-nine, three, four or five hundred pounds, sixty-nine. And when I was redundant in 79, I think I got five and a half, six and a half thousand. Six and a half thousand, yeah. oh, you know, good bit of money that time. Yeah. But then again, you had no job. So you know, it's very hard, very hard not. You were applying for jobs, you're moving on in years as well. I would say if you hadn't the education as well, when you have any primary school education, you know, yeah. I didn't even go to the secondary school. Primary school, well, I went to the tech, the technical school for carpentry and all that, yeah. which I loved. But my father died in 1957, we'll say. Yeah, so you had to go to. And what you done was, 1943, 57, I mean, you can just pick up, I was born in 43, 57, 58. I got a job in spades that time. Oh, yeah. And there were my, I was going to the tech for a bit of carpentry and so forth. Oh, yes. And what you done that time was you went away and got a job. Oh, because true. your father had died yeah. and the money was more important coming in then. That's, that's true. So I worked in spades in the office there, then I worked in spades and uh, in the, the mill again, to call it the, the, the spades itself, you know, oh, yeah. the sawmills. And uh, then from there, as I say, Got into ranks. Oh, and was it? How would what, what would be the best memories of ranks you'd have? So like, uh, what was the best memories? The least standing out memories of it? Or? Oh, the best, the best was was the, your workmates. Was you it? know, all your yeah. workmates, and you know, and I mean, we went into ranks that time, from the early days to the fifteen and nine pence a day, yeah. up to the time we left. There was always good money paid in ranks, you know, and. Um, the social side of it was very important. Would we went into ranks there, we'd say, you're going at six o'clock in the morning, you went on your packer, you know. Yeah. And I mean, you had to get out your production, yeah. and that was it. There was no such thing as Dawson, you know. You all kind of worked as a team? We well, worked as a team, yeah. yeah it, was, it was a great team there, you know. Was the thing like, uh, after working with people, go for uh, pints and stuff? Or? They're mostly on a Friday night now, they go at that time, but some lads would have yeah. a couple of pints yeah. most days, you know. But um, then again, if you were getting up at six o'clock in the morning, yeah, you, you know, right. you wouldn't be. <laughs> yeah, I don't think. And if you were on a 12 hour shift, I can tell you, you wouldn't feel like going into any pubs. Be nasty, you know, right? You know, you'd, you'd, uh, you'd have. Um, you'd be tired. Yeah. You know, yeah. just have gone. But then again, we were all fitter that time, you know, yeah. young film, and, you know. Yeah, good, uh, No, it was a good job. The social side of it was very good. I was saying, you know, there were sports, there was in the yeah. football, and 
I was a great old crack there too at the yeah. time, you know, you could up a ball and, you know. Yeah, you did. There was a few that was going on in the world and, you know, be joking and whatever. Type, you think you'd be supposed so I suppose it was really... Well, you would, yeah. Yeah. Because I worked afterwards then in uh, 1679. In 1980, I went into the solutions, caretaking. It was, it was a new initiative at the time, caretaker. So we're going to paint and decorate in the schools that time now. And, um, General caretaking, security, yeah. get a plan, bit of everything really, you know. Oh, yes. And that was that 28 year. 28 years. That was the only man working in that school now. Oh, so they could so <laughs> You were going from one extreme to the other. Yeah. I was always looking at the side as across the way, the yeah. docks, you know. Yeah. yeah. And I could see it every day where, where, I, had, where I had worked previously. You know. yeah. Yeah. But that's what you'd miss, generally, you know. The day, the, the, the day would fly. Yeah. You know, on yeah. you because you were working with good guys and, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Massive impact. Would you still be in contact with some of them? Oh yeah, quite a lot of them, yeah. A lot of them now would have passed away as well. The mm. I think. <coughs> we'll think say for instance now. <coughs> Excuse me. Just going to the phone is on Jack O'Flaughlin, he's dead. <coughs> Junior year. Okay. Martin Lynch has died. It's Jack of Florida again. He's died. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I'm still in touch with quite a lot of yeah. lads. Um, Martin Lynch, he has passed away. Another photograph here, let's see. Um, That man was a great sportsman. Was he? He's a friend of mine, John Limerick. Um, he would have played with St. Patrick's, and he had great prospects of going to England to play football. Yeah, and, um, this never happened for the poor. Well, I suppose we all were fond of a few drinks and so forth, yeah, yeah. but I mean, you had to hear them to top training, you yeah. know, at times and so forth. But Sean had great prospects. Sean Gavin, John Purcell, he has died. That man is sad, Martin Lynch. Did a follow up below, you know. And we have a mass every year for them. Yeah, always good. Yeah. We had it in the Franciscan Church, but the Franciscan Church has closed our recent place in Old And um, I think we'll revive it now again this year. We always have it in November. Oh, yes, yeah. Wanted all his own. Yeah. That's a lovely event. And we always had Ryan Smale by Squire below. Oh, yeah. Singing that, you know. We're all very good singers. Yeah. I used to last with me at all weeks at the weekend, now quite a lot of them. I still do, some of them. We'd have a few drinks, you know, but that time, like, you'd have great sing songs around doing like pubs, you know, there was no music that time now. It would have been a major one thing. Especially in a pub called Transport Places, where the map Euro is now. Oh, yeah, yeah. And there was always kind of a pub, you know. Oh, yes. And uh, it's going down on me with a few pounds and whatever. Oh, yeah, I mean, in Ranch, you see, you. I would say at that time, though, how many is there, William? Uh, I think it was about 30 there, and on the, when the provender closed, the Blue Cross plant. But before that, I would say, going back a few years before that, there'd be a lot of. Well, before all the automatic stuff came in uh, with the pallets, there'd be, da there'd be a lot more daily buys in Clyde there again. But when you were in Clyde afterwards, as a daily buy, you'd be in Clyde for a week or two. You know? Yeah. Previous to that, you had to cook on every morning. Yeah, oh yes. Which was, you know, you mightn't be in Clyde then because the foreman might say to you, William, why can't that? And was, you know, yeah. you wouldn't have employment for everyone, you see. And then the following day, you might get a job, and the other lad that was there oh yeah. previous to that that got the job, he might be left aside. You know what I mean? They were fair that way, you know. But um, as I say again in the photographs there, now you can see the people that would have worked there at that time, that would be a very interesting, good interest now for you. And the money they, they would have got at the time, you know. Um, That's very good. You know, the golden old days, 1930 to 1979. <laughs> you, see, look, you can keep those, by the way. I saw a tag mm. 
Yeah. I think Jackie, Jackie, Jackie Haynes has some of those now as well. She has the very same actually. Yeah. No, but uh, you say going back to ranks again on that side, as I said, we went down as far as GWI. Then below that again, you had McMahon's Timber Yard. Yeah. You know. Then going on, you had a fertilizer company, Shamrock Fertilizers. Again below there, you had Copley's, which was on the lower part. You had the Limerick Gas Works, where the gas was, or the Limerick Gas for the, the townhouses was before we had a natural gas. Yes. And that old gas works is still down there. Yeah. If you, you know, if you go up a Curry Street now and looking yeah. over, it's there. You oh, know. That, oh yes. Yeah, there's, there's a big tank there. You know. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of that toxic at the moment, I think, to have to do a big job on that. Then going back to the other side of the road, but uh, coming back down the dock road now, back towards into the city again, you had the Irish War, Irish War where we made all the nails and screws yes. for all the buildings. Yes. You can just picture now, that's closed up as well yeah. now. But uh, in that place now they have um, the store for doors and, you know, a big lot of stuff like manufacturing. It's just a store, really, kind of yeah. a, um, well, it's a shop site, you know, for wholesale, for builders. Below that, then you had one of our silos, one of the big silos. It, it went to fire there around 1979. There was a big fire, and a lot of the ground was burned. And then you had the one, the main entrance to the docks that time. Docks was a very interesting place to go as well. You see on the Meet the sailors there, mm. and you had a lot of timber coming in at that time to Rangs or to McMahon's. You had the major ships that were massive the Irish Hall, the Spruce. You had another ship there now as well, I forget it. But that time, the um, the timber would, would come in uniform on uniformed lengths, mm. and you'd have the dockers taking it into space mm. where I would have worked in the office there. And then the sesta timber. Oh. Sesta timber would be put into different lengths and different we'll say piles of timber. And to put it back into the different uniform lengths. Now it's coming into fines mostly. I don't think there's much timber coming into the docks anymore, they like docks. And now it's coming in in all lengths of the same, it's all bundled yeah. where that done away with a lot of doctors' work as well. You know. oh, yeah. sure. But doctors' work was very hard at the time. Yes, but we were all very close to the, all those people now yeah. in ranks. We had a kind of a good, well, most of them, because they all travelled up and down the same road every day. Yeah. You just got to do it. We knew them through the interferon football, yeah. you know. Yeah. We knew them through John Halvey's, which was the local pub down there. Yes, yeah. Probably still down there, just the old ones now. Oh, yes, yes, yes. yes. And um, that was a that was a lovely pub as well, you know, all that all that area as well. Thanks, mate. Which was happening? Because of the 